Jesus on the cross, grant our prayer, Lord. May we fulfill our lives with your ideals, be joined with you in the supper of the Lord, grant our prayer, Lord. May we perceive always and everywhere your all-pervading presence, grant our prayer, Lord. May we end our days with your holy name, in our hearts and on our lips, grant our prayer, Lord. Forgive our sins, O God, grant our prayer, Lord. Cleanse and renew our hearts, grant our prayer, Lord. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. Well, good morning, and uh, it's a very nice morning. Uh, God's got a great sense of humor. We took off on Thursday for the, uh, the Synod down in Connecticut, and uh, here it is, only you know, October, and it went down, and it's snowing all over the place. Sharon driving from Channing Beach just to here, just a couple of miles. Three cars are off the road. She says, you're going? I said, we got to go. So we got off. It took us about an hour to get to Springfield. And then from there, it was kind of clear sailing. And uh, the Synod, I usually come back from these, and I just, oh, geez. But this one was very, very good. And so um, there was a lot of good stuff that came out of it. And I would like to share that with you um, as half of the sermon. And so I will be asking our two delegates from the, uh, no, one delegate from the parish was Teresa Belisle. Uh, Jane Gripko went because she is our central senior council representative to the diocesan council, so she went as a diocesan council member. And up there, Shirley Mitlitsky Floyd, I think, I hate to tell her, I think she's got a job for life. Um, she, she, um, she, her doctorate is in this kind of facilitating, and so um, she did a wonderful job, and, and I don't know, you take all these different people, you break them up in small groups, and in all these different small groups, there's all these different ideas. They try to condense that down to a, you know, a certain manageable number. And then Shirley's job is to take all of that and create something cohesive. And so, uh, Shirley, I got to tell you, I, I learned this from Father Ray Trader when I was in the cathedral parish as a very young assistant. He says, don't do everything well, you'll never get out of here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you got to screw up at some point, Shirley. Honest to gosh, you're going to be doing this forever. But uh, she did a great job. And uh, the Synod, uh, I'd like to talk about some of the, I think, very positive results of the Synod. Uh, very surprising results. And uh, so one of the things is, is that um, I know you guys don't believe this because you're at Holy Name, but they think liturgy is dry. <laughs> so um, I know that, you know, reading this, I've heard a lot of, you know, people aren't really happy with uh, some of the words in here. And, and I know that just sitting here talking to you, as you sit there, you know, kind of nice, silently living, sitting on a wooden pew listening to me for an hour, that's not, it's not going to do it. Um, and so I think even the church now realizes that we have to make some significant changes. And uh, so they're talking about trying to energize the liturgy. And we have a chance to participate in that process of what we would like to do. So that's going to mean changes on my part, because I know this can be rather dry. Um, but if I'm going to go out of my comfort zone, you guys have to do the same thing. Sing a little bit. When people go to Mass and they sing, what a beautiful sound that is. And, you know, I, I go, we had that opening Mass and I sang, and they came to me after Mass, and I'm thinking I'm doing all this up and down stuff. I'm on, they say I don't change. My voice is just <laughs> the same. The no, I'm hearing this, this Pavarotti, and they're saying it's all just the same. But don't be embarrassed about your voice. Just give it up to God. I mean, honest to gosh, it's a gift. And so if I'm coming out of my comfort zone, which I have to do, um, I ask that you try to do the same thing as well. Um, so with all of that said, we now gather as God's people in God's house, and I ask you to please make a private examination of your conscience in preparation for Mass. Feedy on page 41 together. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, who knows the very most secrets of my heart, that I have sinned in God, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. In your presence, O God, I publicly express sorrow for the many sins by which I have offended you. I resolve to amend my life, to improve and sanctify it, in 
endeavoring henceforth to serve you faithfully all the days of my life. I ask all those who dwell within the Church of Christ, the Blessed Mother Mary, the Holy Apostles, the Martyrs, and Faithful, who have lived, suffered, and died for the Gospel of Jesus Christ, as well as you, my brothers and sisters, to witness my confession and pray for me, who are the Lord God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant, most gracious Father, that with purity of heart we may worthily fulfill this holy action established in remembrance of the Last Supper and the death of Jesus Christ, and for our sanctification and salvation. Be present among us, Jesus, our most perfect Master, because you said there were two or three are gathered together in my name, you are among them. We also ask, Lord, that through this holy liturgy we may experience a spiritual revival and a better understanding of your holy will bringing us together as one great family, guided by your commandments and by love, truth, and justice. Amen. And may we say together, let us pray to the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, indivisible, revealed in triune power for all time, now and forever. Glory to God in the highest, and peace with people on earth. Lord God, heaven and earth, Almighty God and God, we worship, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you through your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, we cease our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the most high, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Loving Father, however much we turn from you, you always have compassion, seek us out, and welcome us back with love. Transform us through your Holy Spirit, that we may never be lost to you. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The lesson prescribed by the Church for this day's Holy Mass is taken from the second letter to the Thessalonians. To this end, we always pray for you asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. As to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being found I just lost my place, and are being gathered together to him, we beg you, brothers and sisters, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as though from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord is already here. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Test me, Lord, and try me. Search my heart and mind. Your love is before my eyes. I walk guided by your faithfulness. The Lord is strong with the rest. The Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the earth, who have observed his law. Seek justice and seek humility. Cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God, you cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me so I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there was named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was, but he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass by. When he reached that place, Jesus looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. And when they, <clears throat> excuse me, when they all saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay in the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man, too, is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to see and save what was lost. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Then all of a sudden, we've got this realization that Jesus died, and then he resurrected. And so Paul changes the verb for us. He says that we don't die. We fall asleep. We fall asleep in death. We wake up on the other side in that warm embrace of Jesus Christ. So dying is still no fun. Nobody's going to brag about dying. But death no longer has to be terrified. But human beings... We don't want to let that happen. We kind of hold on to the scary. We almost insist on it. And I think it's because there is so much that is mean in this world, we can't accept the idea that there is something as good and as wholesome as this promise of eternal life on the other side. And so we come up with Halloween. The whole message of the gospel is that death is nothing to be afraid of. You just heard about that Zacchaeus story. Today, it says, Jesus, I've come, you know, this man too has come, he's part of the, the, the people of God, and today, another person is coming to the kingdom, I have come to seek out the lost. We have a God who is not a scary God, but our world is a scary place, and so we create all of this stuff about Halloween, ghosts and goblins and devils and pitchforks, and you know, 
there are more people that talk to me, who walks around in a collar, who talk to me about ghosts, than who talk to me off the cuff about God. There's a whole slew of people who believe in ghosts, but they don't talk to me as much about God. There are surveys out there, and I don't know the logic of this, but there are surveys out there that more people believe in hell than believe in heaven. I don't know who creates a hell if there's no heaven where the good guy lives, but they believe in hell more than they believe in heaven. And again, I think it's because this life can be mean, and we're just kind of used to thinking about that. But don't throw the supernatural on top of all the meanness of this world. You know, Jesus doesn't use fear very often in his sermons. He doesn't talk about fear. So when you go to a concordance, which lists every single word in the Bible there, you can go and you, there's it's a very short list in the Gospels where the word, where the word fear comes up. And at one time, Jesus says, and this is scary stuff, do not fear those who kill the body, and after that can do nothing more. But I will warn you, I'm going to warn you whom to fear, says Jesus. Fear him who, after he has killed, has the power to cast into hell. Yes, Jesus says, I tell you, fear him. Well, now that's a pretty scary message right there. It sounds like Jesus is latching on to all the scary stuff that we like to think about on Halloween. Devils and demons and ghouls and, and zombies and all that kind of stuff. And you know, just the scaring of Jesus out of you in cemeteries and dark corners here and there. That sounds like that's the message Jesus is talking about. But I cut Jesus off before he was done. And that's a no-no. You don't cut Jesus off. If Jesus is talking, you let him talk. And so the next thing that he says immediately, as soon as he says you fear him, Jesus then says, are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them, one little bird, not one of them is forgotten in God's sight. Do not be afraid, says Jesus. Aren't you of more value than many sparrows? So right after Jesus says, fear him, he turns around and he gives that cute little saying that aren't we worth so much more than a little bird? And that's that Jewish form of argument from a lesser to a bigger truth. If Jesus cares about every single little bird, can you imagine how much he cares for us as children? So the message is that the all-powerful God can do whatever the all-powerful God wants to do, except he will not go and act contrary to his own nature. And his nature is of love and compassion and forgiveness. So tomorrow on Halloween, if you've got kids coming to the door, that's, that's as scary as Halloween can get. I mean, let them go out. Let them get their candy. Let them put on masks of devils and witches. And don't worry about Satan kind of sneaking through all of that and then converting these people away from Christianity. Let them have their fun because Satan and God, the devils and ghouls and witches and zombies, that's all silly. It's just plain silly. Don't be afraid of that stuff. Be afraid, it says in the Bible, of the God who can do more than just kill. And remember that Jesus says, don't even be afraid of him. So rejoice in the fact that we have such a God that after this mean world, we have a promise of God who died. And all we have to do is fall asleep. And in his name may we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. But we're not done. <laughs> Now we get to talk about, just really quickly, about our synod that was just held. Um, and so I think maybe the first one I'd like to go to is, um, if there's any, not, I'm not going to say from up here, I'm going to come down here. Um, is there anything that Teresa, our own delegate, would like to offer? And we'll have a formal presentation, but is there anything you would like to say about the synod? Yes, it was a very exciting. Can everybody hear her? No. Oh. Okay. Use your real voice, I've heard it. <laughs> microphone right there. Oh, please. Okay. Right. <laughs> it was a very exciting, electrifying um, synod. Uh, Dr. Shirley did an excellent job. First of the committee of 20 to decide what we were going to discuss and who we were going to target. And we're targeting not us, the millennials, the people that are going to be here. We want to hear from them. We don't want it. We want it this way. We're formed. There's going to be a group that's going to be formed. There's going to be an event. They are going to have an open voice in our church. We are recommending 20 youth delegates to the next synod. That is a 
Number two um, was, I think I was also energized by the ability to be able to speak in our democratic church. There was an issue with the um, diocesan newsletter. There was a report given by them. And I don't know if any of you realize, but Father Andy's article was banned for that. from that. I was refused from that. And because it dealt with women's ordination, well, I got up and spoke about that. And I, I also issued, I also read the quote from Richard Holder about his feeling about women's ordination. And the third thing I would say is we have a rock star. Where did he go? <laughs> we have a rock star in our place. When the young men's uh, organization report was to be given by Father Randy, they announced his name. Do you realize he got a standing ovation like a rock star? <laughs> it was incredible. The feeling, the energized feeling there for him, not because of the report, but because of who he is and the open discussions we have is something that we should be very, very proud of. And I thank you for that. up to the front as well. Um, Jane has said that she you pr still prefer not to say anything at this time or <laughs> Jane Jane had, I asked her before and she said she said yeah. Oh go ahead. things very well already. Um, this committee of 20, this was uh, Bishop Paul's idea. He wanted to have um, a, to have a person from each parish to be part of this planning process for this synod. Uh, Teresa was the representative from this parish. And we never exactly had 20 people. I think we had about 18 or 19, but still, uh, we had two conference calls. And based on those conference calls, we did design uh, the synod based on their input. And as was said, um, our the goal that really the bishop gave us was we really need to grow our membership uh, within the Eastern Diocese. And um, that group of 20 felt like we really need to target it. We can't be everything to everybody, and we really need to focus on a specific group. And we will be focusing on that 16 to 35 year age group. Uh, many of you have um, your own children, grandchildren who may be participating participated before and they don't participate anymore. And we're gonna be working on trying to uh, reach out to that, that group to see what we can do, what changes can we make to attract them and re-attract them uh, back, back to the church. Um, and so the small groups came up with four themes for what I would call overarching goals. Uh, the first one is to increase awareness about our church through the various um, social media uh, aspects. And, you know, talk more about the teachings of Bishop Hudud, talk about our Catholic faith, uh, be aware of the spirituality needs of this group of what they are termed uh, the millennials. Um, and as Teresa also said, to um, develop this database, recruit our uh, PNCC adults within that age group and uh, develop an event that would be designed by them. We would probably start with focus groups first at the senior, uh, 
level in these focus groups will probably be teleconferences. We would ask some key people, maybe some of your children and your grandchildren to say, gee, would you come together for a, a conference call and, um, you know, let's just talk about what are some of your spiritual needs and how can we design an event around that. Um, and as Father Andy mentioned, uh, there was a lot of concern about uh, a more interactive mass, more contemporary Christian music. Um, and the other aspect then was to educate all of us on what are the needs of this specific group of, of young adults, um, families and families with young children. So that's going to be the focus. Um, and there's still going to be a lot of work to do. But I believe there is that energy and that enthusiasm to move forward. So thank you. And thank you, Father Andy. All right, thank you, sir. So, um, Shirley did mention about the uh, four goals and that, that age group that we're shooting for. Uh, what I would like to emphasize is that um, we did mention Bishop Holder and his progressive idea. And that word progressive was, I thought, essential. Um, we're done, I think, with just trying to be something that we're not. I think we're going back to Holder. We're starting to go back to emphasizing um, his message that we are a different kind of Catholic church, and that was called ca our, our clarity of our faith. And so we're going to start emphasizing more and more that we are a different Catholic church. Still Catholic, obviously, with the Eucharist, but not we're Catholic in a different progressive sense. Um, even Prime Bishop gave a wonderful session on uh, the history of Bishop Hoder. And one thing I didn't know, uh, these ladies down here representing the Adoration Society, um, this church was organized in 1897. Uh, the, the rubrics in the Mass for 1897, that a priest is not supposed to celebrate Mass by himself. There's always supposed to be a congregation. The rules, according to the Prime Bishop, were at least one man had to be there. If you couldn't get one man, well, all right, then you had to have at least a boy. If you couldn't get a man or a boy, you still had to have the congregation. Well, all right, I guess we'll accept women, but we, they have to be, in, in the, the words of the rubrics of 1897, at a distance. They could not be close enough to the Eucharist because the Eucharist and the priesthood would have been contaminated or something ridiculous. So Bishop Holder was raised with this rubric in mind. One man, if not that, then a boy, if not that, then a woman at a distance. Holder, the first group that he forms in the PNCC is to create the Adoration Society and put the women in the front pew. And I think that was just amazing. All right, you put the women in the front pew. So, it's not, it's not enough to maintain what we did in 1897. You take that tradition and move it forward. We're not a museum. So if in 1897 he took that bold step of moving women forward, we have to continue to work in that progressive field. So I'm extremely excited. We are going to be saying prayers very shortly. Uh, one of the prayers I'd like to offer is for Bishop Thomas Gannat, the bishop before uh, Bishop Paul here. Um, he is, the last I heard, was a community medical center in uh, Scranton with, is it called sepsis? Is that the sepsis. word? A blood, a blood infection. He's not doing well. Um, he's not really eating all that much. Um, he's uh, malnourished or something like that, according to his wife, Catherine. So I do have a card here. We'll say a prayer for him. On the way out of the church, if you could sign that card, I'll, I'll drop that in the mail to him uh, tomorrow. Thank you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty Lord, as we gather before your altar this day, I'd like to offer my thanks for all of the good people that came together uh, to make yesterday's fall bazaar such a success. Uh, their hard work is very much appreciated by all of us here at Holy Name of Jesus. I'd also like to thank the, uh, the, four, the three ladies from our parish that participated in yesterday's synod, the Friday and Saturday synod. We thank you for their dedication, their work, and their effort. And we pray, Lord, that the, uh, the good things that came about at synod may be brought to completion. We also offer our prayers at this time in memory of Albert Seymour, a beloved husband, uh, a beloved husband and father who would have been 95 uh, tomorrow, uh, October 31st, was offered by his family. We offer prayers of thanksgiving as Elizabeth Cronin celebrates her third birthday on November 1st. It's offered by the Bukarski family. We also continue to offer our prayers to those battling cancer. Meg Connors by Ellen and Don Strosky. Brandy Clemens by her grandmother Dottie Baronis. Carl Dickinson by Joe and Peg Kruschev. Fathers Ray Freda, Jan Vilcek, and Maurice Lazelle is offered by myself. Richard Poe is offered by the Poe and Foster family. 
Two-year-old Jack Sela is offered by Marianna Foster, and Frank Strosky is offered <coughs> by the Strosky Gates and Kirkendall family. Also, Liz Bridgman, diagnosed with cancer, raising three young girls on her own, is offered by Cindy Benjamin, and Alex, 16 years old, with lymphoma, lymphoma Hodgkin's disease, and also Alicia, a young mother of three, who has stage four breast cancer, again, is offered by Cindy Benjamin. Are there any intentions you'd like to offer from the congregation? Just an update on Jack Soleil. Um, he received his liver transplant and just prayers so that he um, maintains his liver and doesn't reject it. He's six years old. Okay, thank you. Anything else? All set? Okay. So these prayers, Lord, plus the private ones that we bring before you are our own thoughts. We ask the Lord to bless each and every one of us here gathered, also to be with those of our parish who are unable to be with us here today, and of course those of our parish who have chosen not to be with us here today. For all these things together, Lord, we pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us and our salvation. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and the kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord our giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I have found the most out of the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The Lord supports all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. We receive from your most sacred hands, most gracious Father, the sacramental bread, the same faith and trust which did the apostles and disciples of your Son and our Savior, when he said to them, I myself, the living bread, come down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, we shall live forever. The bread I will give is my flesh, and the life of the world. Lord God, you do this great dignity and worthiness. For Jesus Christ, you exalt and renew and sanctify. by the 
sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord be with us. Amen. Heavenly Father, bless us in the gifts that we have offered, and show us the way that leads to eternal happiness with you. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God. Forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through his cross and resurrection, he freed us from sin and death and called us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people set apart. Everywhere we proclaim your mighty words, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. Therefore the angels and archangels, with all the saints in the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We therefore, most merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, most humbly beseech you to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy, unspotted sacrifices, which your holy church receives from you, imploring you to defend and guide her throughout the world, together with her priests and all true believers of the holy faith. Remember, Lord, your servant. imbued with faith in your holy care, your rule, and fatherly love. Wholeheartedly this day, we unite in spirit with all of them, we are the most blessed Mother Mary, Mother of Jesus Christ. Likewise, as apostles with all the countless hosts of martyrs and confessors who lived, labored, and suffered for the same holy cause which Jesus Christ sacrificed his life and his most precious blood. Just as they believed, professed, and united with you through prayer and submaculate oblation, which you have instituted from the beginning of the world, and in time have fulfilled through Jesus Christ, and gave it to humanity as a pledge of eternal salvation. So we too this day profess and unite ourselves with you, most gracious Father, in humbleness of spirit, and accept from your hands this holy bread and this precious chalice as a long-for gift bestowed on us by the Savior of the world as spiritual food and drink. He promised us this food and drink in that moment when he revealed his divine power by the multiplication of bread, and feeding within a hungry multitude of people. Afterward, he foretold the giving of that food and drink to his disciples and friends as a more excellent nourishment when he said, This my Father gives you the real heavenly bread. I myself am the living bread who come down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he shall live forever. The bread I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And afterwards, when the temporal and messianic life of the divine teacher and giving the covenant was drawn to a close, he gathered into the upper room all those who had loved in a singular way and had chosen to continue his work of salvation. He spoke to them words of deep love, longing, and resolve. I will not leave you orphaned. I will come back to you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Do not be distressed or fearful. You will suffer in the world, but take courage. I have overcome the world. If you live in me and my words stay a part of you, you may ask what you will and it will be done for you. Anyone who loves me will be true to my word, and my Father will love him. We will come to him and make our dwelling place with him. I consecrate myself for their sakes now, that they may be consecrated in truth, that all may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you. I pray that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. 
I, I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one, and we are one. I living in them, you living in me, that their unity may be made complete. Father, all those you gave me, I would have in my company, where I am to see this glory of mine, which is your gift to me, because of the love you bore me before the world began. I myself am the bread of life. No one who comes to me shall ever be hungry. No one who believes in me shall ever thirst. After these and other words of the Archbishop's prayer and with holy fervor, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed you, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, mindful, Lord, we, your servants, and your faithful people, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son and our Lord, as well as the blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we receive from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. These gifts we receive with a joyful countenance, as from him who is the giver of all temporal and eternal good gifts, and with an unshakable faith that they will become for our souls the saving remedy. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, to command that our offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar into the presence of your divine majesty. That we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and who have passed on to eternity. To these souls, Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, grant everlasting life, and to those during life straight from the path of righteousness, unmindful of your fatherly love, mercifully short in their suffering. We ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts are always open to justice and mercy, and lies patterned after their divine Master, merit and eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen by whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, and with him, and in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and followed by example, we say with confidence,
deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, is also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our days, supported by the help of your mercy, that we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same, Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and life eternal. Amen. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching, and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused for my judgment, though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, for your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it last and I be entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. But only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return to the Lord? For all the grace that he has given me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be you.
Show us, Lord, your love and grant us your salvation. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Ever living God, we give you thanks and praise that we have received your Son in his holy word and in the holy Eucharist. Make us worthy of your call, that we may always be ready to respond to the needs of others. We ask this for our same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Sacrifices offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and all of those for whom I have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.